Well, uh, thanks very much for the introduction and for the invitation to speak at this brilliant meeting. Um, I'm a new group, group leader at the University of Sheffield. And actually, I have to say today is my first day at the University of Sheffield. And what, a better, what could be a better start than actually um, attending this fabulous meeting? Um, and I thought I would start by, since this afternoon session today is a bit about uh, cancer cell shapes, I'd start by showing some images that really illustrate the wide variety of cell shapes that cancer cells are able to adopt. And um, I think if there's one kind of defining feature of the shape of cancer cells is really, like many of their other characteristics, it's really their plasticity. Um, so the cancer cells, whereas cells in kind of non-transformed uh, differentiated tissue tend to have a very fixed cell shape. For example, epithelial cells are like little boxes. Cancer cells are really able to adapt their shape to different environments, um, whether that is in, in cell culture, in 2D and 3D, in a tumor where you may have a very crowded um, compressive environment or during metastasis. But what I'm going to talk to you about today is actually a very particular cell shape transition that um, cancer cells have to go through a lot. And that's illustrated by this um, image at the bottom showing a cell in a breast cancer patient tissue biopsy. And what you can see is this uh, rounded cell here. This It looks much bigger than the surrounding cells and it's very round. And this is actually a cell that's undergoing mitosis um, and dividing. And so when cells divide um, in tissue culture or in tissues, they tend to undergo this series of shape transitions, uh, which is known as mitotic cell rounding. Um, and this is illustrated actually in this video here that I've got for you. Um, so this is a HeLa cell just dividing in tissue culture on a um, glass dish um, and the actin cytoskeleton is labeling the edge of the cell in green and DNA is labeled in red. And what you'll see that happens is that as this cell enters mitosis and prepares to divide, it completely changes shape and becomes spherical and completely round. And then the uh, metaphase plate is formed and the chromosomes align in the middle of the cell. And then they're separated and the two daughter cells spread back down onto the substrate. And one thing that we've known for quite some time is that when, when cells divide, they not only actually change their shape, but they also really change their mechanical properties. And um, this is illustrated by an experiment that we did quite a while ago, actually doing some optical stretching. Um, so in this case, we're catching cells in an optical trap and applying a stretching force and measuring their deformation under force as a measure of their mechanical properties. And you can see that interphase cells, these are HeLa cells plotted here in red, are much more deformable um, than mitotic cells shown in black. And by various different mechanical measurements of cells, um, for example, atomic force microscopy or a real-time deformation cytometry, it, we always find the same difference between interphase and mitotic cells. Interphase cells are much softer, they're much more deformable, whereas mitotic cells are very stiff and they don't deform easily. And um, over the last few years work by both um, our lab and uh, many other labs have kind of started to uncover some of the molecular mechanisms of this quite dramatic change to cell shape and to cell mechanics that occurs when cells divide. Um, so there's kind of three principal pathways that are at work. One is that cells have to lose their adhesion to the underlying substrate. Um, secondly, uh, water actually enters the cell, which increases the cytoplasmic pressure, but also the actin filaments are actually completely rearranged in mitosis. And uh, when cells enter mitosis, the interphase actin, fil actin structures like stress fibers are disassembled and actin filaments are recruited into this um, uh, cortex underlying the plasma membrane. And this cortex is what gives mitotic cells their characteristic round shape and also their rigidity. But actually today, I don't really want to talk about the molecular mechanisms of these shape changes, um, but I want to talk more about actually why cells need to round up um, in mitosis and what are the consequences of this, and also about um, whether this has any relevance um, in cancer. Um, so to really try to discover why cells round up and stiffen before they divide, actually the obvious biologist approach is to, to block that and see what happens. 
And so to do this, we do, used an approach where we uh, confine cells underneath hydrogels, uh, which can be of different stiffnesses. So under a soft hydrogel, the cell is able to round up and it can, as it rounds and stiffens, it's able to push upwards and uh, deform the gel and round up. Whereas if you put cells under a really stiff gel, they're unable to generate that force to round up and they end up going through mitosis completely flat. And what we find is that these cells that go through mitosis um, completely flat actually undergo, have a lot of defects in the formation of the mitotic spindle and the segregation of chromosomes. And so in the cells that are, where they're able to round up under the soft gel, the, this, the cell, they're able to form a normal mitotic spindle. But what happens under the stiffer gel is that essentially the, the mitotic spindle is a three dimensional structure and there just physically isn't space for a normal spindle to form. And what you get is lots of chromosomes that can't be attached to the mitotic spindle and you get them cells that become arrested in mitosis because they can't attach all the chromosomes. And you also get these weird kind of fragmentations of the spindle where it will resolve into like a spindle with three different poles and actually these cells will go on into divide into three daughter cells instead of two. And so we actually think that uh, mitotic rounding is a, a mechanism that enables cells to, to in a tissue to um, to build, uh, to form enough space to be able to push out against their environment and build a proper um, mitotic spindle and segregate their chromosomes properly. And I guess for a while we've been kind of wondering whether it, cancer cells do this process any differently compared to non-transformed cells. And kind of the reasons that we've been thinking about this is, is partly because from anecdotal um, observations that actually cancer cell lines tend to round up a lot in mitosis compared to non-transformed lines. But also if you think about the cancer cells are dividing a lot, but the environments that they're dividing in are gonna be very different from a normal tissue. And tumors are often characterized by um, a lot of extracellular matrix and an extremely stiff uh, microenvironment. And we always kind of hypothesize that maybe uh, mitotic rounding could help cancer cells proliferate in a stiff environment, similar to what we see underneath a stiff gel. And um, so we really wanted to ask, actually, rather than just comparing cancer uh, with non-cancer cell lines, we wanted to look specifically at oncogenic signaling pathways and to see whether actually oncogenes can directly affect um, how cells change shape during mitosis. And um, to do this, we've been looking at RAS oncogenes. Um, and most, most of the data I'm going to show you today is actually using HRAS, but we've also um, get similar results using oncogenic KRAS mutations. And what we, we're using as a model system is um, a system of normal non-transformed epithelial cells uh, where we can turn RAS on inducibly um, using um, an estrogen receptor fused um, oncogenic RAS. And we've also got a model of long term where we've um, we long, a long term expressing RAS in these cells. So we can look at both immediate effects of activating an oncogene and longer term effects in a kind of oncogene addicted model. And what we find actually when we turn RAS on both over the short term and over long terms is it does affect the shape of cells and cells round up, become rounder in mitosis. Um, and this is quantified here. So we actually, the interphase um, cell length and aspect ratios are plotted in black and we don't see any difference really in interphase um, cell shape. Whereas in mitosis, the um, cells when RAS is turned on are rounding up more. Um, and we looked, we looked at some of the downstream signaling pathways from RAS to see uh, which of these may be having an effect, uh, may be responsible for this effect that we see on cell shape in mitosis. And we found that if we inhibit the MAP kinase pathway, so MEK or ERK, we find that this completely a block, blocks the effect that we see um, on mitotic cell shape, whereas the PI3 kinase doesn't. And so we kind of actually, it seems that if the act levels of pathway activity around down the RASMEC earth um, signaling pathway really seems to um, directly affect the shape of cells um, when they're in mitosis. So when you have high, um, high pathway activity, such as uh, this cell on the left where RAS is turned on, um, you see that the cells are very round and very tall in mitosis. And conversely, if you block all, see all pathway activity levels, for example, by inhibiting MEK, what you get is these cells that are now entering mitosis and going through mitosis um, quite flat. So this is quite surprising in that it seems that um, this oncogenic signaling pathway really can directly affect cell shape during this uh, during cell division. And it's also quite a quick effect because um, it, it, we see about it takes seems to take about five hours before we see this effect on cell shape. And so this model system is that it's 
RAS, when you turn RAS on, we immediately see downstream effects like phosphorylation of ERK. But then it seems to take around five hours, but then we start to see these direct effects on cell shape. Um, so we wanted to know whether uh, if RAS and um, MAP kinase signaling is affecting cell shape, whether it also affects the mechanics of cells in mitosis. And um, we found that, that it, this is indeed the case. So here we're now using atomic force microscopy uh, to measure uh, the cortical rigidity of cells in interphasal mitosis. And as I mentioned earlier, you see that cells become much stiffer and they increase their elastic modulus um, in mitosis. However, the RAS um, activated cells, they actually become much softer in interphase, which is something that's been quite well documented in the past, that cancer cells generally are often softer than um, non-transformed cells. But yet when they divide, they become stiffer. So actually the stiffening, the net increase in stiffness as the cells round up is increased. And so we wanted to see whether these um, kind of changes to cell shape and mechanics that were um, induced by RAS uh, really had an effect on how the cells were able to round up in the gel confinement assays. And we find that actually by activating the cells where RAS have been, has been activated, are able to translate these shape and mechanical changes into greater um, pushing force and they're able to round up better under the gels, um, under, which you can see over here. Um, and in fact, what we find is that these effect, the, for the ability of the RAS cells to um, round up underneath these stiff gels actually limits some of the um, defects in spindle formation and chromosome um, segregation that we normally see under the stiff gels. So I mentioned earlier, you get unattached chromosomes because the spindle is unable to capture all the chromosomes. And this leads to activation of the spindle assembly checkpoint and mitotic arrest. But in the cells where RAS has been activated, this is actually uh, abrogated a little bit. And similarly, we get these strange kind of tripolar mitoses where you get the spindle fracturing and cells dividing into three. And this is also decreased um, when RAS is activated and then it also increased if we inhibit uh, the downstream um, map kinase signaling pathway. Um, so this is the kind of the model we, um, we of, of our results is that when uh, that cells round up in mitosis, um, but when you activate RAS, uh, cells become softer in interphase, but yet when they round up in mitosis, they become stiffer and they also round up more. And while this probably doesn't have a very big effect in a cells in a dish, um, actually when you confine the cells and they have to push against something in order to round up, this uh, means that the RAS um, activated cells are able to perform better and to round up more in a kind of tightly confined environment. And this actually limits some of the mitotic defects that are seen um, when cells are confined in mitosis. And we kind of argue that perhaps this may mean that oncogenes such as RAS are able to promote cell uh, successful cell division and proliferation in the kind of very stiff environments that you might find in a tumor. Um, so to move on from this, we wonder, we wanted to, so we've looked at mitotic rounding, but we wondered actually, how does RAS have more wide ranging direct effects on actually on how cells divide and what happens to these cells when they exit mitosis and the new daughter cells that are formed um, following a cell division. And this is a project that um, a clinical PhD student that I work with, Sushila Ganguly, has been working on um, in recent years. And she's actually found that uh, RAS actually impacts multiple aspects of cell division, not just um, the cell shape in mitosis. And so the first example is that uh, RAS affects the orientation of cell divisions. And this is just all on in normal kind of tissue culture conditions on glass. Um, and you can see this in this um, cell line that she's made where, where tube, this mitotic spindle has been labeled um, using tubulin GFP. And in the um, kind of normal epithelial cells on glass, so the, they always divide like this top cell in that the spindle um, aligns parallel to the substrate, which is here. And then the cell divides in, in parallel to the, to the underlying substrate. Whereas when RAS is turned on, what we get is a lot of a rotation of the spindles. The spindles are much more dynamic and they're also kind of unable to position themselves well parallel to the substrate. And you get a lot of, of spindles that form at kind of 45 degrees and ultimately the cells will divide at this angle too. And uh, the result of this is you get these um, kind of strange cells that divide almost perpendicular to the substrate. And you can see this illustrated in this, um, this movie at the bottom here. So this is a cell that's just finished, a RAS activated cell that's just finished division. 
um, you can see the two daughter cells are joined by um, the midbody here shown in shown in the bright tubulin signal. And one, the bottom cell has able to, been able to spread back onto the substrate, whereas the top cell is almost stuck on top of its sister and, uh, and it remains spherical. And what you'll see is that over time it wiggles and moves about a little bit and eventually it's able to contact the substrate and then um, spreads back down next to its, next to its neighbours. So the, the second thing that we observed is that also in the RAS activated cells, there's a lot more rotation of the mitotic spindle um, within the plane of the epithelium. And uh, what we find is that, um, again, in the control cells, um, the, the spindle tends to orient well uh, to the long axis of the cell and also to the long axis of the, um, the mother cell before it rounded up in mitosis. And what that means is that, event is that when the cell divides, it will do so along this axis. And then you get two daughter cells that kind of go back and end up respreading and reoccupying the same space that the mother cell um, occupied before division. And when RAS is turned on in this system, you get a, a misorientation of the spindle at a spindle angle is much more random. And you often get these divisions um, where the cells where RAS is activated are basically respreading in a completely different shape to the, to the, the shape of their mother cell. Whereas um, with low RAS levels or when, um, when the MAP kinase pathway is inhibited, cells kind of go back to reoccupy the position of their mother. And the final effect we see is in the formation of um, cell cell junctions following mitosis. So again, when these, these cells are epithelial by nature, um, so when, when you get a cell dividing, um, which you can see um, a control cell in the top here, and this time it's the actin cytoskeleton has been labeled using LIFAC GFP. And you can see that the cell initially divides, but then very quickly the two daughter cells stick together and they form this point of adhesion between them. And in RAS, um, RAS cells, RAS activated cells, this doesn't happen and the daughter cells actually often move apart from each other. And you can see this more clearly here in this um, immunofluorescence where we've stained for E. cadherin. Um, and you can see that here are two daughter cells and you can see the join um, by the midbody. And you can see that they're forming an E. cadherin containing cell cell junction between them. Uh, conversely, in these cells where RAS has been activated, you can see that the, the, this the daughter cell, it's still got its junctions with the neighbours um, from before division, but actually there's no junction forming um, between, between the two neighbours. So actually, in summary, what, what we found is that just by turning on an oncogene over quite a short time period, so five, five hours, five to 10 hours, actually has quite a profound effect on the kind of the cell biology of how cells are dividing. Um, so in the non-transformed cells, the cells may round up a bit, but not so much. They uh, maintain quite a lot of attachment to the substrate, which allows them to angle their spindle parallel to the substrate. And then they divide and they kind of go back to form the footprint of their mother and they form a cell cell junction between them. However, when RAS is activated in cells, um, actually you get cell, these cells that round up a lot. They, the spindle angle is misoriented. You often get kind of perpendicular divisions to the substrate. And then the daughter cells both go off. They don't, they, they don't um, maintain their mother cell footprint and they don't form junctions between them. And so I think it, it's quite interesting that actually um, an oncogene can have such a direct effect on the cell division process over such a short time period. Um, but of course, all of these experiments have been done in very kind of traditional tissue culture um, conditions on glass of kind of sparsely plated cells. Whereas actually, I think that these alterations that we're seeing are probably likely to have a much more profound effect on cells dividing within a tissue, because obviously, um, misorientation of the spindle angle can lead to bilayering or loss of um, a tissue monolayer and of course not reforming junctions after division um, could lead to, to kind of a breakdown of the whole um, integrity of an epithelium. So this is actually where um, what we're planning to work on in the future and um, is really to, to kind of ask how do these RAS induced changes that we see to cell division, do they actually contribute to the loss of tissue structure that is um, that is so um, that is so, uh, so so characteristic of a tumor, and potentially even to metastasis um, itself. Um, and to do this, we are um, looking at a number of different systems. So we've started looking rather than at single cells, looking at epithelial monolayers um, of these cells, and we, we actually plate confluent cells on um, a soft hydrogel. 
um, which I think gives um, cells both a better apical basal polarity, but it also is a kind of more, uh, gives a more kind of physiological mechanics to allow us to answer, ask these kind of questions in a confluent tissue. And we do notice in this case that um, activation of RAS over a short, oh, I've gone too far, over a short time period does change the spindle angle. And actually our collaborators have just recently published a paper using this system um, where they show that actually after 24 hours of RAS activation, you get a, already get a kind of significant loss of monolayer integrity and a bilayering and almost a three-dimensional transformation of what was previously a, um, a two-dimensional epithelium. So um, in the future, we'd like to use this system um, as well as looking in more complex systems such as um, in three-dimensional cell culture and also um, in more tumor-like environments on um, the effect of, for example, stromal cells um, and how oncogenes can affect um, the kind of, how affect cell division and um, the kind of structure and integrity of tissues. Um, so finally, I'd just like to thank everybody um, who was involved in this work. Um, so uh, this work was almost entirely done at UCL um, in the work of my post in, by myself and um, Sushila um, in, in the lab of my postdoc supervisor, Buzz Baum. Um, and these are our collaborators that we've worked with. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm starting my, um, my lab in Sheffield today, although I'm not there. Um, and my lab's gonna be over here and we will be recruiting uh, postdocs and students um, to work on the mechanics of cell division um, in pancreatic cancer. So if that sounds interesting to anyone, please do get in touch. Thank you.